Romans 7 is one of the most debated chapters in the Bible. Was Paul talking about his past struggle with sin or his present post-conversion struggle with sin? The main battle verses are 15 to 25, but some specific verses are 15 and 19. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And also, for I do not do the good I want to do. Instead, I keep on doing the evil I do not want to do. Now, most hyper grace teachers I've heard believe it's referring to his past, and so do some non hyper grace pastors as well that I respect. Even Todd White believes it's about Paul's pre conversion, but takes it one step further and makes fun of Paul by calling him bipolar. I have become that. That's the truth. Like, I've become it. And people will try to talk you out of it your whole life. They will say, well, you know, Paul had a sin issue. Paul was, even though I don't want to do the things that I'm supposed to do, I do the things I know not to do. And just all that Romans 6 confusion. If you look at Romans 6, it's sandwiched in between Romans 5, Romans 6. Romans 7 is where it says, if I don't want to do the thing, I don't want to do these things, I still do them. And all that stuff, it sounds like bipolar Christianity. It is. Romans 5 says, I've been justified by faith. I have peace with God. I've been declared fault, flawless in the eyes of the Father. It's amazing. Yay. I have peace with the Father. Romans 6 says, I'm dead, crucified, buried with him in baptism. I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead, I'm dead. I'm dead. Reckon yourself dead to sin and alive unto God. Dead. Romans 7 says, you know, even though I don't want to do the things... I'm doing them anyway, because I'm bipolar. Todd has been noted to boast about his flawless, sinless walk on many occasions. He is right that God sees us as righteous through Christ, but it doesn't mean we're sinless. Sin still breaks fellowship with God when we quench the Holy Spirit. I want to give some reasons why I believe Paul is speaking about his present-day struggle with sin. The first and simplest reason is that he's using present tense verbs. He says, I keep on doing the evil I do not want to do. And for what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. So he's not talking about the past. It's an easy way to show that even apostles like Paul still had struggles. Yet some say that Paul's use of present tense in this passage follows something lawyers do as a more effective way to persuade a judge or jury. This draws the audience into the story as if it was happening right in front of them. This kind of persuasion was established in Rome by a famous attorney named Cicero. He lived from 106 B.C. to 43 B.C., and this form of persuasion is still taught today in law schools. But I don't believe God wants this to be so coded and complex that only an expert in hermeneutics can figure out what it really means. Present tense means present tense. We also have to remember that in the original language, there were no section breaks, and by reading the English translation, it breaks the flow. And in this case, the flow is very important. In chapter 6, he discussed the death of sin. Early in chapter 7, he has used the metaphor of marriage to describe being dead to it. In chapter 8, he discusses living by the power of the Holy Spirit, which is the solution to the distress of chapter 7. So chapter 7 and 8 are actually simultaneous. This is an aspect of the paradox theologians call the already but not yet. They are two sides of the same coin, which result from chapters 5 and 6. So, to conclude that chapter 7 is about his former sin damages the structure of Romans. Why would he deal with that after dealing with sin already in such detail in chapters 1 to 3, and then presenting justification by faith thoroughly up to chapter 5? And the question beginning chapter 6 is, are we to sin so grace may abound? So I think we can conclude that the relation of the Christian to present sin is the topic that occupies chapters 6, 7, and 8. I think Paul is clear in the book of Romans that grace is not a license to sin, but sin is an issue in our lives, and most importantly, that the solution to sin is found in Christ alone. But that's it for today. Remember to like and share these videos if you are finding them useful. And as always, please share your thoughts and comments below. And until next time, take care and God bless.